The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take this out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us? For doing this, Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name. When they saw the signs he was doing, but Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. My friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. A blessed Sunday to all of you. Could you kindly bless the person beside you by greeting a blessed Sunday? We are now in the third Sunday of Lent. Third Sunday. And let's have a review. Review of our past Reflections, starting with the first Sunday of Lent. Konting review lang po, no? Balikan natin yung ating mga pinagnilayan noong mga nakalipas na linggo. On the first Sunday of Lent, we were brought to reflect on, who could still remember, the experience of desert. The desert experience. Do you still remember the gospel when Jesus stayed in the desert? For how many days and nights? Forty. That's right. No, He stayed there. And in the desert, he was tempted. He was tempted. And that is why desert referred to as a place of testing and transformation. It is where we experience our weakness and dependence on God. So every time you are being tempted, every time that you feel you, that you are being weakened, you are in a desert experience. Every time that you are being tested and being transformed, you call it a desert experience. That's the first Sunday of Lent. The second Sunday, last week, we were brought to reflect on the experience of the mountain. Remember the story of Jesus' transfiguration when he brought his disciples 
in Mount Tabor and suddenly his disciples witnessed his transfiguration and they heard a voice telling Jesus is the Son of God. Therefore, mountain referred to as an experience of God. So every time that you feel God, that you experience God, you feel high, you call it mountain experience. Kapag answered prayer ka, oh, that's mountain experience. Kapag naramdam naramdam mong Panginoong Diyos, you call it a mountain experience. Now, today, third Sunday of Lent, we are being brought to the temple. So from the desert to the mountain, today we're being brought to the temple. In our gospel, we heard the story of the cleansing of the temple. Jesus got angry at seeing vendors and money changers in the temple area. And so, he made a whip out of cords. Kumuha siya ng latigo. And drove them all out and said, Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Meron ba kayong alam na simbahan na parang palengke na? Hello? Madami, no? Huwag natin isa-isahin. Baka magalit sa atin. Oh? <laughs> the Jews questioned Jesus for doing such. And he said, What sign can you show us for doing this? Because the Jews feel that they have more authority over the temple than Jesus. Pinapayagan nga nila eh. Pinahihintulutan nila ang pagtitinda. Pero bakit sinasaway o pinagbabawalan naman sila ni Jesus? The priest then allowed it because it's part of the business. Siyempre, may paupa. No? Siyempre, yung mga bibilin doon, dadalhin din sa templo. No? It's for business purposes. No? But that is why they're asking Jesus, what is your sign? Show us a sign for doing this. For them, the Jews have the authority and Jesus does not have. Jesus' has answered confused the Jews by saying, destroy this temple and in three days, I will raise it up. They got confused because for the Jews, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and yet you will raise it for three days? From this, we understand that they have different understanding of temple. Kaya minsan talaga, no? Eh, mahirap talagang unawain ang Diyos. Kaya you don't easily judge. You don't easily go to conclusion for whatever is happening to you. If you ask God, suspend your conclusion. Suspend your judgment. No? Hindi natin maiintindihan talaga ang Diyos. For Jesus... He is referring to temple as his body. His body. But it was only realized after so long. Kailangan muna mamatay. Lumipas muna yon. Now we understand it because we have seen the whole story already. Right? But during that time, they cannot understand. Because hindi pa naman nangyayari eh. Only then will they understand when Jesus will raise his body after three days. But the, during that time, they cannot understand. Because for the Jews, they understand temple as the structure, the church itself, the building. But Jesus, it is his body. And today, we will reflect on the temple as a body, our body. St. Paul tells us that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
And that is why He calls us to honor and respect our bodies. To take care our bodies, physical, mental, and emotional. And living in accordance with God's standards and values. In accordance with God's standards and values. Ganito ang pag-aalaga sa ating katawan ayon sa pamantayan ng Diyos. Kaya nga, sa ating unang pagbasa, matapos ihango ang mga Israelita mula sa pagkaalipin sa Ehipto, sila ay binigyan ng Panginoon ng kautusan ng sampung utos para sundin, para sa kaayusan ng kanilang buhay, para maiwasan na ang anumang posibleng umalipin sa kanila. God had already saved them from slavery. And so He is giving them commandments for them to prevent from being slave again. Para hindi na sila maging alipin. But sadly, due to their obedience, disobedience, same with us, due to our disobedience to God's commandments, we become slave of sin. We become slaves of sin. Instead of having control over sin, we are being controlled by sin. Sa halip na tayo ang kumokontrol sa kasalanan, ang kasalanan ang kumokontrol sa atin. Sumusunod tayo sa kasalanan. Sinusunod natin ang ating kahinaan. Instead of following the commandments of God. This is the reason why Jesus is angry. And the reason of cleansing the temple Angry not at the people but at what the people do that disrespects and dishonors the temple. Hindi siya nagagalit sa mga tao, kundi galit siya sa ginagawa ng tao na sumisira sa respeto at paggalang sa templo. Galit si Jesus sa mga bagay na nagpaparumi sa templo. Galit si Jesus sa mga kasalanan. Kaya niya tayo tinuturuan kung paano ito lalabanan. And that is through the obedience to God's commandments. The obedience to God's commandments is our weapon to fight sin. And this starts from within. The obedience to God should start from within. I remember a story of a teacher lecturing her young students about sin. Ang mga teacher magaling sa mga uh, ano ba to yung mga um, in, um, illustration, no images, no para magkaroon ng linaw, no they use materials objects for the students to understand. And so the teacher used the illustration of an apple to explain what sin is and how sin works. He showed his students an apple. But the students recognized that the apple has holes. May butas. What do you think why do think why does that an apple have a hole? Bakit kaya? Hello. Kumakain po ba yung apple? Bakit may butas ang apple? What do you think? Saan galing? Merong yun. And so the teacher asked the students, "Where does the hole come from?" Yes, the student answered it came from a worm. The student said, it came from a worm that crawled 
on the surface of the apple, licked it, and bored the hole from the outside. Di ba ganon? Is that how we understand it? But the teacher told them that it is not generally the case. Hindi laging ganon. Hindi lagi yung uod galing sa labas. Rather, the teacher said, a worm lays eggs in an apple blossom. And the egg is hatched in the core of the apple. The hole that you see indicates that the worm has bored its way out from within. Hindi lagi nagsisimula sa labas ang uod. Sa usbong pa lang ng mansanas, nangingitlog na ang uod. At habang lumalaki ang apple, lumalaki, nagmamature ang itlog. At sa loob, mapipisa. Hanggang sa lalabas ang uod, kakainin ng loob, palabas ng mansanas. The same goes with our sins. Same goes with sin. It comes from within, which bore its way out of us and eventually will destroy us. Ang kasalanan, hindi lagi galing sa labas. So stop blaming the outside. Oh, kaya ako lang naman nagawa yun kasi sabi niya eh. Oh, tinukso ako. It's not always in that case. Your sin starts from within. Within your mind and within your heart. And little by little, it grows until it eats your inside and it comes out leaving you destroyed. My dear brothers and sisters, this Lenten season, we are being brought to the temple. Yes, we priests invite you all to come back to church, to go back to the church this Lent. But more than that, it is an invitation to go back to our own bodies. Look into our own bodies on how we have used and abused them. We're being invited to clean our body, our temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit through the sacrament of confession. And hopefully, we could bring back the respect and honor that our sins destroyed. Later, we will receive Jesus and he will enter our body. The invitation for us, never allow Holy Week to come or even pass without going to confession. Clean our body. This is the invitation of Lent. We have 40 days as a preparation for that. And we use the 40 days to prepare to clean our body, to go back to our bodies and reflect on the many sins that we have done, that destroyed our body. This third Sunday of Lent, once again, we are being invited to go back to our temple, our own temple, our body. Amen. <laughs>